Good afternoon, folks. Uh, good evening to some out there. It is Earthmaster here jumping in on the live stream with an update video for this uh, beautiful Friday afternoon here in California. March 19th, 2021 to date, straight up 4 o'clock p.m. West Coast time here in, in California. Taking a look at the latest quake on the globe is a 4.4 up here around the area off the coast of Russia in that Pacific Ring of Fire bend area, that little, uh, little bend in the, the plate boundary right around that area where that 6.6 .6 struck uh, a couple days ago, a few days ago now. Still seeing some aftershock activity um, today in that region. Also a little bit of earthquake uptick in the New Zealand area. Uh, some deeper movement as well. We'll go ahead and check that out on the latest USGS map here on the uh, all magnitudes. Of course, all magnitudes uh, corresponding to the states. 4.0 and above or 4.5 and above internationally looking at the earthquake activity down here around the Kermadec Trench area shows some uh, deeper movement 5.6 inland in this little uh, area west of the Kermadec Trench getting a little bit closer to that Hikurangi subduction zone there I keep mentioning that uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of uh, major quakes on it but the potential is there for a pretty uh, good sized earthquake in this subduction area of the uh, New Zealand region. Hikura Hikurangi Trench. Uh, look it up. I got a video. Um, kind of details a little bit more about it. If you want uh, to check it out, I'll include it at the end of this video as a link. Uh, but for now, today, 5.6. As I mentioned, pretty deep. 168 kilometers below the surface and inland west of the Kermadec Trench area. Uh, a couple other quakes here along the Kermadec Trench at 10 kilometers. Uh, 5.1 being the largest in this little cluster along the trench, but 5.6 uh, strongest in this area today. So a little bit of uptick in activity along that region, also up here through the uh, Solomon Islands. Papua New Guinea region, seeing a couple small, moderate-sized quakes, 4.6 there, and a little bit further west, seeing some movement. Uh, but overall, uh, main focus today, roughly uh, down here along this section of the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, kind of watching that area for... Uh, potentially further movement throughout the next day or so. Uh, the states, United States area, seen your typical earthquake activity in California. We have seen a little return of the earthquake swarm in the Salton Sea region. I do want to go back over the last uh, seven days. Eh, yeah, let's go seven days, uh, 2.5 and above. And uh, there wasn't a whole lot down there, was there? Most of these are going to be microquakes. There we go. The all magnitudes here kind of show the uh, spread out activity uh, over the last week of microquakes for the most part uh, in that swarm. Of course, that's kind of how it starts up um, in this region. Uh, not uncommon to see some swarms here. So kind of just keeping an eye on that, um, making sure this thing doesn't get too close, making sure that swarm doesn't get too close up here to that uh, the sleeping giant, better known as the... Sandra's San fault there. This section here is the uh, de pretty dangerous and uh, it'd be deadly one once this thing blows or slips, I should say, unlocks its uh, full potential 8.0. I think 8.1 is the greatest uh, possibility there for uh, uh, for this section of the southern branch of the Sandra's San fault, which has been uh, building up pressure pretty steadily uh, for many, many, many years now. Ridgecrest still seeing a little aftershock activity. Same for Nevada. No major movement into Northern California or at any volcanoes into the Pacific Northwest. A little bit of microquakes around the um, Yellowstone region. And of course, down in Texas, seeing uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity. Kind of ramping up, right? It's starting to look like California. That's the last thing they want, I'm guessing. Uh, just in this region here, quite a few. We're looking at about 20 earthquakes within the western Texas area uh, pecos texas area also into parts of new mexico stretching up here a couple um, well somewhat sizable for this area 3.4 uh, north of the border out there in the desert it, uh, once again this is not uncommon for this area as well but it does seem like the multitude of quakes that are taking place is increasing in this region um, and it's uh, at least today 3.4 looking like the largest quake there in this area as we go back seven days and check out the uh, all magnitudes in this area you can see quite the uh, jump up 
of magnitudes just over the last week. Um, 101 earthquakes in this area. That's pretty significant for this section. Not saying that it doesn't happen, but uh, it's been a while since we've seen a uh, the multitude of quakes that we're seeing uh, in recent times. So just kind of stay safe out there watching that area pretty closely. Yellowstone National Park, there's not a whole lot going on there, folks. A couple small quakes uh, continuing in the small earthquake swarm in the northwest corner of the park, um, outside of the caldera of the super volcano. All these spikes right here indicating some microquake activity, um, barely showing up at all on the USGS map here. It looks like they might be including, no, well, it looks like I'm surprised they're including a couple of those, about four microquakes there west of Roaring Mountain, west of uh, Highway 89 area um, in Yellowstone National Park. And as uh, far as the other areas over here, it looks pretty, uh, um, excuse me, looks a little, uh, looks like it may be calming down a tad bit. I've seen a little uptick right here in the central part. A couple of small individual back-to-back -back quakes there. But overall, not a whole lot going on, folks. Um, Potential solar storm coming up, uh, according to the solar solarham.com or .net site. March 20th could see an increase in potential solar storming uh, as we get that uh, wind speed from that uh, pretty good-sized coronal hole there, which is now facing the Earth. Uh, looks like within the next uh, 48 hours or so, we could possibly be reaching a minor G1-class uh, solar storm. Uh, of course, higher latitudes have a good risk, high chance of seeing the auroras. Mid-latitudes, we're only looking at, uh, well, mid-latitudes uh, over the next day or so, a couple days, anywhere between 15 and 25%, but uh, 60% 60, 60 there in the high, uh, higher latitudes on March 20th. Um, and, of course, the aurora forecast updates regular on the live stream, so you'll be able to see the uh, potential forecast there. Um, when that does hit right now, keep the index pretty low. We have not received that swarm or uh, stream of wind from the sun, but uh, it is expected there. Pretty good size one. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a great, safe, happy Friday evening. Um, Yellowstone, like I mentioned right there, kind of popping off. You can see uh, some more earthquakes there around Yellowstone National Park. Well defined. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on it to see if that thing decides to uh, give us a full-blown earthquake swarm. It's been a while since we've had a, a really good size one. Just kind of watching that pretty closely. 3.1 there in Southern California. Did we even get to see that? Let me double check here. I don't think I even seen that on the map. Uh, okay, it was on the western part over here. Kind of, Kind of buried underneath all of these magnitudes. Not really, it just stands out right there, huh? How did I miss that? Oh, let's focus on the swarm. Okay, yeah, 3.1 striking over here. West side of the plate boundary on the Pacific side of the plate. Looks like right around the Ellesnore Fault System. Um, maybe a little bit further to the east by a mile or so. What is that, the Granite Granite Mountain area? But uh, that's, that's about it, 3.1 out there, kind of continuing the, uh, the uh, building of the mountains. Uh, other than that, folks, all right, we're out of here. Have a great night. Please stay safe out there. We'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Peace out.